Today we are going to take a look at PowerPoint Chapter 2, so if you would like to join me in your textbook. The yellow section of your book, pages PPT58, is where it starts, and it's all about enhancing a presentation with pictures, shapes, and word art. And I'm going to show you a few more other features. Um, first thing I might want you to do is just go to My Assignments in Blackboard and open up a few files and save those to your desktop. I'm going to go to Blackboard. I'm going to go to My Assignments. Scroll down to PowerPoint 2. And I've got a variety of uh, files here. Some of these are some sound bites, some pictures, a video clip, a little bit of music. So just a variety of files. And you can go out and get these online as well, like I'm going to illustrate. But I just saved a few of these for you. Um, so they're easy for you to work with. All right, let's go to PowerPoint. And we are going to start a new presentation. So let's go file a new. Now, like last time, we can search for a template or we can choose a template that's already here. In this chapter, they want us to search for a template. And I'm going to come up to my search box and I'm just going to type in basketball. You can tell that I've already searched and found it because it's right here. But you're going to need to search for it. And it should pull up this presentation and we'll select it. And there's only one um, color option here, so we'll just hit create. And it looks like this. So when you pull over templates, sometimes templates have pre-set up not only backgrounds, but some have pictures and charts and tables and transitions already set up and added to them. We're going to have you delete a few of these slides because we only need four slides in this presentation. So we're going to delete slide three. So if you can select it in miniature over to the left. And you can tell it's got like a red or reddish orange outline. I'm going to just hit delete. Let's delete this slide with the table and chart. I'm deleting a few of these. So that's going to leave us with four slides. Let's go to slide one. And on slide one, it's set up again in landscape orientation. It's set up as a title slide. I'm going to go to my top placeholder. And we're going to put on a basketball camp for kids. So basketball camp for kids. Now, as we work on these practice presentations, it does not have to look exactly like mine. It does not have to look exactly like the textbook. It's the idea that you're playing and experimenting and learning some of the concepts in the chapter. This is put on by Gilbert Park District. And then they have an online image down here in the corner. So let's go to insert online picture. And they actually call this an illustration. So I'm going to choose basketball illustration just to see if that'll narrow my search a little bit. And I think it's something similar to this idea. But again, it does not have to be exactly the same picture. So if you're scrolling through and you can't find the exact picture, just pick another one. It doesn't matter which one you, you just select. So I'm just going to insert one. We can size it. And kind of size it so it'll fit down here in the corner. So whichever illustration you would like or a little picture, I'm going to rotate it just a little bit and stick it down here in the corner. If I want to try to get rid of that white space, sometimes it'll let you, sometimes not. So I'm going to go to Format and Color and Set Transparent Color. There we go. Okay, I'm going to go to the Notes page and just say that my illustration provided by And that came from bing.com. So that notes page is a good place to put some notes like that to help you out. 
so you'll remember. Because in this one, uh, we're going to show you how to make a work sided slide. You always want to cite the places that are helping you create your show. Now let's record our voice just for a review like we did last chapter. Let's go up to insert audio, record audio. And we're going to say something like, join us for a kid's basketball camp. Join us for basketball camps for kids. I'll drag that off to the side, just like last chapter. Remember, you have that playback tab. I want it to go automatic. I could hide it if I wanted to. Okay, that's slide one. Let's move to slide two. Slide two is set up already with a picture and a little caption layout over here to the side. We are going to have you learn from pros and make friends. And then our caption is going to say, classes meet weekday. Afternoons throughout the summer. Now I'm going to illustrate how to insert a little video clip down here at the bottom. So I'm going to scooch these placeholders up just a little bit so you can always get near a corner. And when you have that four sided arrow, you can move your placeholder and you can size a placeholder too. So I'm going to stick in a little video. And the video I got from stockadobe.com. So you can go out and search stockadobe.com and search for basketball if you want. Um, I saved that for you already on Blackboard, so it should be one of the files that you've saved already. So I'm going to go to Insert, and this time I'm going to go to Media, and I'm going to choose Video. Video on my PC, because I already saved it, and it's called a dunking basketball video. And I'm going to change the size of that little video, and I want to size it and make it small enough that it fits over here on the right. Have to make it a little bit smaller. And then we'll go up and take a look at the playback tab. You'll have a playback tab on a video just like you do music. And I'd like it to go automatic. Some of those won't go automatic. They're just stuck on a click, which is fine. And if I wanted to trim the video, this is only a short nine second clip, so that's fine. But if I wanted to clip it just a little bit, I could scooch this over just a little bit and maybe clip it a little bit off the tail end. So the green is where you want it to start. The red is where you want it to stop. Or if you have watched it and you know the exact time, you can type that in also. All right, I want to show you a little bit of layering. We're going to leave this picture here, which is fine. I'd like to put a picture on top of that, and I'd like it one picture to fade into the next picture. So sometimes you're going to have a minimum amount of slides. Like you just have a few slides and you want to fit a lot of stuff on some slides. You might do this little concept of layering. So let's go and get another picture. I'm just going to go to insert and in online pictures. I'm going to look for basketball teamwork. I'm going to grab a picture. Again, you can choose whatever you want. And I'd like to make it the size of my other picture. So I'm going to get on a handle and stretch it out because the idea is I want this picture to fade into my next picture. Now, sometimes when you get pictures, they try to go to the front or the back. And it just happened to be that this one wanted to go on front, which is perfect. So let's stretch this out. Okay, I'm going to scoot it over for a minute. I can add effects. So if I want this to fade into this picture, I'm going to select it. I'm going to go up to animations and get the drop down. I want to go to the exit category. I want this picture to fade away into the next picture. So I'm going to choose fade. You can kind of see it really fades fast. 
Now I'm going to have this stack right on top of my other picture. And then can I have you open up the animation pane? Remember that animation pane opens up over here to the side. And I am going to have you get the drop down on your picture. And I'd like you to look at timing. We added effects last chapter, but we, we really didn't take a look at timing. So you can get pretty deep into timing. Let's take a look at timing. And as you add effects, you can set up the duration on those effects to go from very fast to very slow. So I'm going to set mine for very slow so you can kind of see the fade exit. And it's going to fade exit into the next picture. All right. Now let's go down and in the notes page, let's say that our video is provided by stock Adobe com and my picture is provided by bing.com. Now I would like to add a little bit of music on this as well. So this slide's going to have a lot of stuff going on. I'm going to have you go up to insert and I have already saved a file for you, but if you would like to go out to this, site it's called mididb.com m-i-d-i-d-b.com and i list that for you on blackboard so you can see the name of that site um, but different music files and types work in powerpoint you can work with uh, mp3 you can work with a wave file and a midi file and a midi file is just going to be like backdrop elevator music you're not going to have words that go with it, which most of the time when you give a presentation, you probably are going to be speaking and you don't necessarily want to have all the words and the music. So I'm going to go to audio, audio on my PC. And I have saved my file. And again, it looks like the recording that we've made. I'm just going to scooch my music to the side. Notice it's set up for a little trigger here. So let's go to playback and I'd like it to be automatic. Yeah, if you haven't worked through the copyright information management simulation yet, we can legally use 30 seconds of music. And this happens to be a 36 second clip. I don't need that much. I probably need about 15, 15 or 20 seconds of it. So just choose a time there between 15 and 20. And we'll okay that. Now I can change the order of things over here to the side, remember. So if I wanted that music to kick in before anything else, I could drag that to the top of my list. You can use your order tool right here also. So that's a little bit on slide two. Um, they have adjusted the background of this slide. It's going to be hard to see much background here, but let's do a right click. Let's close out of the animation pane. Let's do a right click on our slide. Get you back over here. So if I right click this, there's a little option to format my background. And in the textbook, you can kind of tell they have like a marbly looking background. So I can set up my background for a solid fill and I can adjust my color right here. A gradient fill, which is like a shading effect. I can get a picture or a texture. I can get a pattern. And those are a few options. So we're going to play with texture. I think that's what they've got going here. So texture, you have a few textures to pick and choose from. And I think they picked something like this brown marble. So it kind of looks like that. So that is slide two. Oops. Let me go down to the notes page and let's record that our music is provided by MIDI, M-I-D-I-D-B, the MIDI database.com. All right, let's take a second and save what we've got. Let's go to File and Save As. I'm just going to save mine to my desktop. 
and I'm just going to call it basketball camp with my name on the tail end. All right, we are ready for slide three. And slide three, they have adjusted the background too. So I still have my background option open and I can work with that. Or remember, you can just go to right click and format background. That works too. So a solid fill, I'm gonna go, go through a few of these so you can kind of see what they look like. That's a solid fill, a gradient fill. If I wanted to go out and get a picture of some sort and go to my clipboard or a file or an online picture, I can easily do that. Um, let me go out and get maybe a picture real quick. Let's go to file. And I think I saved one out there for you, like a basketball court. So it looks like that. And let's add a title. And we're gonna tell them that you will learn. And then they have drawn shapes and instead of shapes on this slide, I want to show you how to use a tool, cool feature called smart art. So if you go up to insert and smart art, you know, sometimes in PowerPoint, it gets a little boring if you always use a bulleted list. So sometimes it's good to use a graphic enhancer. So I'm going to go to smart art, which are little graphics. And they are categorized for you already, but this is what they're going to look like on your screen. Uh, it's going to be set up so you can add text. Some of them will allow you to add a picture. This is a great place to go if you're giving a presentation about maybe the water cycle or you're at work and you want to talk about the organizational structure. These are already created for you, which is kind of cool. So I'm going to go to cycle maybe. And I want to choose one that I can add a picture to. I'm going to change my mind here. Let's take a look at, I want to pick one that you can see how a picture will get inserted, but also text. And we can adjust these at any point too. Let's grab this one. So I'm in process and it's called continuous picture list. So it's going to look like this. It's going to allow me to stick in three little pictures and a little bit of text. And I needed three because I've got three things I'm going to talk about. I'm going to talk about ball handling skills. I can type directly in the smart art, or if you use the little arrow on the left hand side, you can type in text over here in a bulleted list also. I'm going to talk about offensive moves and defensive mindset. And I can close that here. Now this is set up so I can add a picture. So I'm just going to click on that and immediately go out and look for basketball ball handling or dribbling. So I'm going to insert that. It's going to put it exactly in the shape. So this is something that is maybe more visually appealing to look at instead of just a bulleted list with text. Okay, I need an offensive basketball And then I need a defensive. So I'm going to type in basketball defense. Now, this whole smart art is a little bit large, so I'm going to get on a sizing handle and just make it a little bit smaller. Kind of scooch it down just a little bit, maybe scoot it over a little bit. All right, I can adjust the color if I would like to. I have a little option that I can change colors. So if I wanted to adjust that, I can. Our pictures on this slide. They're 
started by Bing, just to get in the habit of documenting that. And that is our slide three. So a little bit on smart art, a little bit on adjusting the background. All right, let's go to slide four. I'm gonna close this for us for a second. On slide four, they have just chosen a, a different background. They've inserted a picture and we just inserted a picture on the previous slide. So here, let's go in and let's adjust the background again. This time, let's show you the gradient fill. And on the gradient fill, you can decide if you want to go a linear direction, and then you can decide the direction. You can decide if you want to go more radial, and again, the direction. So there's lots to pick and choose from. I'm going to choose radial, and I'm going to choose from center just so I can illustrate how this is going to work. Then you have different stops down at the bottom and these stops will allow you to add some color. You can change the whole look of your presentation by like dragging these stops. So I'm going to add a different color instead of black. I'm going to drag my black over just a little bit. Yours is going to look different than mine. So just pick a color. Go to the next tab stop. Add a color. Go to the next tab stop and you can kind of see how this works. Now, if you wanted to add more tab stops, maybe you wanted more color here, but you know, if you're going to make your team colors, you might have two or three, but you can add here and you can delete here. And then you can fade it out a little bit if you wanted it to be um, pretty washed out or darker. You can make the transparency and see how it's getting darker or you can wash it out a little bit lighter. You can apply that same look to all slides, or if you just want it to be on the slide, we'll, we'll not make any adjustment here. So that's a little bit on gradient. And the, the look totally changes if you change direction. See how you adjust that? Then you can decide if you want it to be angled a certain way. So you can do some cool things with that. So I'll just leave that at that for now let's close out of that and we're going to play with some shapes on this slide so let's go up to insert and i'm going to go to shapes and i'm going to get a rectangle and i'm going to draw a basketball court so i'm going to put a court here and i could fill that with a different fill color maybe make it look kind of like wood Outline it with a different color. I might make my outline a little bit darker so you can adjust the weight. There we go. All right, I'm going to get a another shape. So let's go to insert. Let's go to shapes. Let's grab that oval. And I'm going to make it like a circle. I'm going to try to make it the size of my rectangle. Scooch it up just a little bit. There we go. Adjust the fill on that, and sometimes those are different colors, so I might make that a different color actually and adjust my outline and maybe the thickness of that also so it matches. Now, if I wanted to send that to the back, remember you can go up to your range like we've played with before, and you could send that to the back if you wanted to. Okay, so I kind of have my little basketball court here, and I'm going to add a little word art on top of that. I'm going to say register today. So pick some sort of word art font. I'm going to say register today. And we know that we could adjust the look of that if we wanted to transform it. It looks like they've transformed that just a little bit. And we can size it. All right, I'm gonna add a couple of things that are not in your textbook. I'm gonna play with adding a basketball. So let's go to insert picture, let's just go to online picture. Let's search for a basketball. This one will work. And I am going to make it quite a bit smaller. 
and I'm going to have that bounce across my screen. So I'm going to drag it to the side. If you need to zoom out just a little bit, remember you can zoom out. And I'm going to make this bounce across my screen. So I'm going to play a little bit with transition and animation like we worked with in the last chapter. So I'm going to go up to animations and I'm going to draw my own. So I'm going to go to motion paths at the bottom. Check out custom path. And you're going to draw your path and you can just draw your little path here, whatever little path you want, like it's dribbling across the court and take it clear off the screen. Now, just like we did last time, let's go to the animation pane. Let's slow that down just a little bit. So let's go to timing and it's coming in medium. I'm going to set mine for slow. All right, let's add another shape here. Let's go to insert and let's go to shapes and let's add an arrow. So I'm going to add a block arrow up here. And I could rotate that if I want to, kind of drawing attention to register today. <clears throat> and I can fill that with a different color if I wanted to. Okay, let's add an effect to that. So let's go to animations. And I would like that to maybe pulse. Just going to kind of be, make a little, see how I did that. So I'm going to add a couple effects to that. I kind of want that to pulse over and over. So if you want to add another effect to something, again, I'm going to select it. I need to add animation. So I'll add more. And again, I'm going to pulse. And I'm going to do that one more time. So add animation and pulse. So you'll notice over here to the side, I have that same effect to my arrow here. So it's going to pulse over and over and over. Now, take a look at this. If I wanted the ball to be bouncing across my screen and I wanted this to start pulsing, at the same time, if you get the drop down here, you've got some little options that you can decide if you want to just start things when you click it or you can start with previous or after previous. So if I wanted to choose with previous, hopefully that will be pulsing while my basketball is bouncing across the screen. So you can kind of see the look, how it's going to change. So you can play a little bit. There's lots of timing that you can work with. You also have a timeline down here at the bottom. If you wanted to adjust, see my bouncing ball bounces for a ways before my next arrow starts pulsing. So if I wanted that to start a little sooner, I might have to adjust that, maybe set it for a different time. Maybe I want this to last a little longer. See how I can adjust that. And then I want this to start a little sooner. So you can kind of play with that idea. So you can get kind of deep in your timeline again and uh, drop down here and there's not a right or wrong. You're just kind of playing on this one just to kind of get the hang of how it's going to work. See how that worked? I made the first pulse last a little bit longer and then a shorter pulse and then a very short pulse. So when you hit play, so it's pulsing as the ball is going across the screen. So playing a little bit there with timing, some shapes, word art, a little bit of animation. Let's add your voice to slide four and let's say register today. So again, we'll insert audio, record audio. Register today. And again, 
I don't want to have that shown on my screen, so I'm going to hide it. And I want it to go automatic, so I'll go to playback and make it automatic. Now, if I want the recorded to be at the very end, it can be, or if I wanted it to scooch it up a little bit, I could. That could be the first thing on my slide if I needed it to be. So I didn't get anything from any site here. I just made everything out of shapes and colors. So there's nothing really to document on this slide. So we are ready to show you how to make a red slide. And you might make a work cited slide just like you would make a MLA style works cited page. So I'm just going to go new slide. Let's go title and content and let's just type in works cited. And then I can make a list here. And I can include hyperlinks or just hit the space bar. So I'm going to say my music is provided by midibb.com. And as soon as you hit the space bar, that's going to hyperlink it for you. My video is provided by adobe.com my pictures provided by bing.com all right i hope that caught everything um if this is a bad color if this is going to be hard to see that hyperlink remember that you can go up to design and we looked the last chapter that you can adjust colors and customize those colors. And if that orange hyperlink is going to be hard to see, you might choose a different color. That might be a little bit easier to see on top of your background. And the font here is a little small too. I've got plenty of room. So let's try to make that font maybe a little bit larger and see if that makes it a little bit easier to read. stretch that out just a bit. Okay, so that should get you through uh, working with chapter two. You're going to, again, watch another video, and then you're, you're going to be making a couple big presentations for me that's going to have you stick in smart art and word art and creatively incorporate different backgrounds and playing with timing. So this is just a little sneak at preview of what you're going to be doing in the big projects. So I hope that was helpful. Let's save it. And then you will drop boxes for chapter two.